this is a rational equation and we're going to solve rational equations. There's a specific strategy to solving these. And if you follow the steps of the strategy, you will do fine, even though fractions scare everybody. So, here we go. The first thing you want to do is look at the denominators. It's the denominator that makes a fraction a fraction. So there are three denominators here. Three, 21, and X. Now my goal is to have one number and variable combination. In other words, one expression. That's what I want, what I want. What I want. I want one expression that will cancel out all the variables. No, no. That will cancel out all the denominators. One expression that will cancel out all the denominators because it's a denominator that makes a fraction a fraction. You get rid of the denominators, you get rid of the fraction. So one expression that cancels out the denominators. Okay, well that expression could be 3 times 21 times X. And that would be what, 63 X. But that's outlandishly large and there's a way to make it smaller. Smaller numbers mean you're less likely to make a mistake. So you always want to try to, to use smaller numbers. So instead of a 63, ooh, do this. Look at your three denominators and then factor them. For instance, 21 equals three times seven. This three is already inside 21. So if I cancel out 21, I'm automatically canceling out three. So all I really need is 21 times X. And that's what I'm going to use. This is called the lowest common denominator. Common because it's common to all three. Now, can I move this over? No, I can't. Okay. Okay, the otherwise known as the dreaded LCD. I never really understood how to make a lowest common denominator until I took college algebra. And then I understood 
let's do what we're going to do with the LCD. The first thing I'm going to do now, having decided on a lowest common denominator, is I'm going to write the terms of this expression, two thirds plus four over 21 equals one over X. And then I'm going to come along and I'm going to multiply each of these terms by 21x over 1. And let's do it over here, 21x over 1. And 21x over 1. That's my next step. And that is almost always going to be your strategy. Strategy is very important to winning battles, and you are going to win the battle with this equation. Okay, now, this is going to give me, when we, when we multiply fractions together, we multiply the tops together and the bottoms together. So this is going to be 21x times 2 over 1 times 3, which is 3, plus 4 times 21x over 21 equals 1 over x to oh, times 21 x over 1. Well, right, I multiply these together, that'll give me 21x over x, and I should have just written that. The 1 could just mess you up. Or not. Now, all I have to do here is remind myself that 21 equals 3 times 7. So I have 3 times 7 times x times 2. The 3's are going to cancel. Yes! And over here, the 21's cancel. Yes! And over here, the x's cancel. Yes! And what I'm left with is 7 times x times 2, which is 14x, plus 4 times x, which is 4x, equals 21. And at least for a few minutes, I get to enjoy my fractions being gone. So 14x plus 4x is 18x equals 21 and divide by 18 and divide by 18. That leaves me with x. Now, I want to make sure this is in lowest terms, and I could just throw it in the calculator and say math frac, or you can just do something with small numbers by hand. The threes cancel, and you're left with seven sixths. And now there's one more step. You go back up to the original equation, and usually you only have to look at something, you don't have to do any work, to make sure that seven over six does not make any of the denominators equal zero. And it doesn't. 
So your answer is going to be X equals seven sixths. That was fun. So what we did is if I wanted to put steps on this, uh, what color should I use? How about my favorite color? Step one is list the denominators. And two, find your LCD. Now, it's just that I don't know a few words to describe what we did here, which it's easy to show this three goes into that 21. So we can just use 21 and not have to use three times 21 times X but we could have, and it would not be the end of the world. You could still get the correct answer. It's just the smaller the numbers, the better. Anyway, step two would be find the LCD. And that was right there. Step three, Multiply each term in the equation by the LCD. Whoops. Multiply. Each term. In equation. by the LCD. And step four would be to cancel out all the denominators. And step five is solve. And then because we're dealing with fractions. Step six, make sure your, your solution, your answer, doesn't make any of the denominators equal zero. And sometimes you have more than one solution. Writing words takes up takes up so much time. All right, make sure solutions the solution doesn't or solutions don't make any of the denominators equal zero because that would make them undefined and the whole world could come to an end. Kaboom. And we don't want that. No. Let's go do another one. Okay, we have, we only have two denominators. So the denominators are three and four. 
And so your LCD is going to equal three times four, right? 12. Here, three, it doesn't go into four, and four isn't part of three. So uh, you, have, you don't have any choice. You've got to just multiply them together. So I'm going to take each term in the equation and multiply by 12. So here is x over three minus x over four equals eight. Now, I'm gonna multiply by 12. And since I'm multipl multiplying a fraction by 12, I multiply by 12 over one. Okay, same here, I multiply by 12 over one. Eight is not a fraction. So there's no reason to multiply by 12 over one. I'll just multiply by 12. I have to multiply terms even if they're not fractions. I can't multiply some terms and not other terms. It always has to be the same number. Okay, well, that means I have 12 times X over one times three minus 12 times X over four times one equals 12 times eight, which is 96. Let me make sure. 12 times eight, eight times two is 16, carry the one, eight times one is eight and one is nine. Okay, it is 96. Now 12 equals three times four, so the threes cancel and 12 equals three times four. So the fours cancel. So I now have four times X minus three times X equals 96. And if I have four X's and I take away three X's, I've got one X. That's an X. X equals 96. And there is no way that 96 can make any of my denominators equal zero. No way. So I'm gonna stick with 96 as my answer. Any questions about this? Just blurt it out. Just ask. Okay, now we're getting a little more complicated. This is a very special kind of rational e equation. Notice you've got one fraction equals one fraction. That's very special. One fraction. It's an ugly fraction, but it's a fraction. One fraction equals one fraction. This has a special name. And I bet you'll remember it. Any 
and it has totally slipped my mind. It'll come back. But being a special, fra uh, a special equation with just one fraction, proportion, there you go, proportion. You remember proportions? A proportion is one fraction, proportion. A proportion is just one fraction equals one fraction. And there's a special way you can solve this that makes it so much easier than with any other kind of rational equation. And that is cross multiplying. You multiply along the two diagonals. Here's how you do it. Four times x plus two equals five times x minus one. This is called cross multiplying. It means you can skip a step. You don't need to find an LCD. You could, but you don't have to because you just do this. Four times X plus two along the diagonal, five times X minus one. And then you distribute and you solve. Four times X, four times two, five times X, five times minus one. So you'll have four X plus eight equals five X minus five. And then you'll just solve your equation. I'll subtract four X from both sides of the equation. 4x minus 4x is 0, so I'll be left with an 8. And 5x minus 4x is 1x minus 5. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides of the equation. So I subtract five, I add five, or I say negative five plus five, that's zero. I'm left with an X on the right-hand side, and eight plus five is 13. Now, before I say 13 is definitely the answer, it is. But before I, I commit to it, Let's go back to our original equation, four over X minus one equals five over X plus two. And just make sure that 13 will not make either denominator equal zero. Well, if X is 13, I'm gonna have 13 minus one. That's 12, not zero. And I'll have 13 plus two which is 15 and not zero. So no problem with the number 13. That's what I will write in my answer box. I love proportions. They're so quick and they're so easy. I've always loved proportions. Any question about this? Like I said, if there is, just shout it out. I am glad to try to answer. Okay, now, 
This is not a proportion. There are three fractions. Excuse me. Just in case that was George, George is being such a problem. I think he absolutely loves to play out in the snow. Why would he want to be out in the snow? A dog, maybe, not a cat. Well, anyway, we're going to go through our whole process here. The first thing I'm going to do is write down my denominators x, x minus 5, and x. Well, this x is the same as that x, so I would only have to write that once in finding my LCD. And this is x minus 5. Even though it's got an X in it, you can't divide X into X minus five. There's no X over there. There would have to be an X on both sides. So these X's I can combine together into one X, but this one, this X minus five is going to have to uh, kind of appear by itself with X. So now I take each term and I'm going to multiply it by x times x minus 5 over 1. And my goal is to cancel out the denominators because nobody likes fractions. So 100 over x. See, I, I want to make enough room to be able to write, write my LC, uh, LCD. So there's my original equation, 100 over X minus 100 over X minus five equals 4 over x. Who thought that up? Okay. So, x times x minus 5 over 1, x times x minus 5 over 1 and x times x minus 5 over 1. Now all I have to do is cancel. Remember, 100 times x times x minus 5, all these guys are on the top, and all these guys are on the bottom, and besides that, x times 1 is just x. So, x, let's find a different color. All right, blue. x will cancel with x. x minus 5 and x minus 5 will cancel, and x and x will cancel. See, this one expression over one has got to be able to cancel out every denominator. 
So now what does that give me? That gives me 100 times X minus five, minus 100 times X, equals four times X minus five. Cool, all I have to do is distribute and solve now. Now it's much easier without all those fractions. 100 times X, 100 times X minus five. Minus 100 X equals 4 X minus 20. Now back over here on the left, we've got 100 X minus 100 X. How very strange. So I'll have negative 500 equals 4X minus 20. And then I will add 20 to both sides. So plus 20 plus 20, that's going to be negative 480. Negative 20 plus 20 is zero. So I'll have four X. And then I'll divide by four and I'll divide by four. And so my answer looks like it's going to be negative 120. Now I would love it to be, but I need to be absolutely sure that X cannot be made into a zero by negative 120. No, it can't. X minus five cannot be made into a zero by negative 120, no it can't. And X cannot be made into a zero by negative 120, and it cannot because, hey, it's the way it is. If X is negative 120, it's definitely not zero. So we have just an X here and just an X here going up to the top here. Just an X there and just an X there. If X is negative 120 and then I take away five, I'll have negative 125, which is not zero. So this is cool. I'm cool, I'm happy. X equals negative 120. Was that understandable? You let me know if it's not. Here we go. Of course we're building up to the hard stuff, right? Yes, we are. Oh, right. We're going to look at our denominators here. I'm going to list them. Z, but I always put a little dash through the Z so I know it's not a two. Z minus 10, Z squared minus 100, and Z plus 10. Now this looks pretty scary until you realize this is the difference of two squares. Okay, 10 squared is 100. So, this factors 
into Z and C and 10 and 10 and plus and minus. And once you realize that, you see that Z minus 10 goes in, it, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, yes. Z minus 10 is right there. And Z plus 10 is right there. Both this and this are a part of this. So this can be my LCD. It automatically contains both of the other denominators. So now I realize my life has just been made a lot easier than it might have been. Z over Z minus 10 plus Z over, and I'm going to factor this, Z plus 10 times Z minus 10 equals Z plus 11 over Z plus 10. Looks pretty scary. Let's put parentheses around these. Because I'm going to come through now and I am going to multiply everything by. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it in blue this time. Hmm, I don't really have room on that side, do I? Well, I'll try. Z plus 10 times Z minus 10 Z plus 10 Z minus 10 Now I forgot to put this over 1 and if I put this over one and then multiplied the tops together and the bottoms together, this is what I'd have. So this can be a very handy place saver. And I can multiply this by Z plus 10 times Z minus 10 over one, or you know what? I could if I really wanted to, just do this. C times C plus 10, do this right away as soon as I know what my LCD is, like I did there. Times Z minus 10 over Z minus 10 plus Z Seriously, yeah, times Z plus 10, times Z minus 10, over Z plus 10, plus, times Z minus 10, equals Z plus 11, Notice how I put parentheses around that. It's one numerator. Z plus 11 times Z plus 10 times Z minus 10 over Z plus 10 times one, which is Z plus 10. Right after I found out my LCD, I could have just written it like that, and then I wouldn't have to bother with that step of putting it over one, because your LCD ends up up here anyway, and the one multiplies the bottom here, the denominator, so it stays the same. 
This is just a quicker way to do it. OK, now. C minus 10 and C minus 10 cancel. Z plus 10 and Z plus 10 cancel. Z minus 10 and Z minus 10 cancel. And Z plus 10 and Z plus 10 cancel. And so we're going to have Z times Z plus 10 plus Z Z, okay, equals Z plus 11 times Z minus 10. And now all we've got to do is work this out. So I am going to distribute Z times Z and Z times 10. And over here, I'm going to multiply Z times Z and Z times negative 10 and plus 11 times Z and plus 11 times negative 10. And so we'll have Z squared plus 10Z plus Z equals, that's just so strange. All right, all right. Z squared minus 10Z plus 11Z minus 110. So this will be Z squared minus 10Z plus 11Z is plus Z minus 110. And over here, we're going to have Z squared plus 11 Z. So then we have to use the zero principle and my first move is going to be to subtract Z squared from both sides of the equation. And look what happens. The Z squared zero out meaning I no longer have a quadratic equation, but I have a nice linear equation. Now I add, uh-uh, no I don't. I subtract Z from both sides of the equation. That's one Z. So Z minus Z is zero. Zero minus 110 is negative 110. And over here, 11Z minus 1Z is 10Z. And I divide by 10 and divide by 10. So my solution, before I check, is negative. 11. Now let's see if negative 11 is going to cause any of our original denominators to equal 0. Negative 11. All right, let's see. Negative 11 minus 10 is not 0. It's negative 21. And negative 11 squared minus 100 is 121 minus 100. So that's not zero, that's 21. 
This is negative 21. And negative 11 plus 10 is negative 1. So there's nothing wrong with our answer, but we have to darn well be sure that this answer, this solution, does not cause one of the denominators to equal zero. Because then, just like yesterday, it would not be allowed in the domain. And if it's not in the domain, it certainly cannot be a solution. But no problem. I was betting they would have thrown something nasty at us. But they didn't. Well, this is nasty. Maybe they've still got a chance. Let us come over here. I, I ended up doing these in blue z squared minus 9z plus 18 and z minus 3 and 4z minus 24. Those are our three denominators. This is not factorable, these two are. So let's see what we get when we factor the first one. We get z minus 9 times z minus 9. No, it isn't. I lied. Don't trust a teacher. 18 equals, among other things, negative 3 times negative 6. And when you add negative 3 plus negative 6, you get negative 9. OK. So negative 3 times negative 6. And this is 4 times z minus 6. Now let me point something out here that's really good. Z minus 3 is already included in here. So just by writing this, I include this. So I don't need to even consider this denominator, it's already included. Now z minus 6 down here is already included in here. So I don't have to worry about that, z minus 6. On the other hand, 4 is not included in that. So 4, here are, here are the um, denominators that I have to cancel out. I have to cancel out a 4, I have to cancel out a z minus 3, and I have to cancel out a z minus 6. That is my LCD, because this was already included in the first denominator, and this part of the third denominator was included in the first denominator. The only thing that wasn't was the four. So this is good. So, I'm going to rewrite this one over z minus three times 
z minus 6 minus 1 over z minus 3 equals 1 over 4 times z minus 6. And up on top, I'm going to write this. 4 times z minus 3 times z minus 6 times 4 times z minus 3 times z minus 6 times 4 times z minus 3 times z minus 6. Pull out my fraction bar. Okay. Now z minus 3 and z minus 3 cancel. And z minus 6 and z minus 6 cancel. And z minus 3 and z minus 3 cancel. And 4 and 4 cancel, and z minus 6 and z minus 6 cancel. And I am left with here 1 times 4, which is 4. 1 times 4 times z minus 6, so minus 4 times z minus 6. And one lonely little one times z minus three, which is z minus three. And that is so much simpler than, than this very scary looking thing. So we have four. Now, negative 4 times positive 6 is negative 4z. And negative 4 times negative 6 is positive 24. And over here, we have z minus 3. Okay, 4 plus 24 is 28 minus 4z equals z minus 3. <coughs> now notice, <clears throat> I have a constant term and a variable term on both sides of the equal sign. I can go any way I like. So, I am going to add 4z to both sides of the equation. And that will give me a zero here. Negative 4z plus 4z is zero. So I'll have a 28 over here. And over here, this, is, this z is 1z. 1z plus 4z is 5z minus 3. Then to get the z term by itself, I will add 3 to both sides of the equation. Oh no, a fraction. 5z equals, 8 plus 3 is 11, carry the 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. So I'm going to have 31 equals 5z. And then I'll divide by 5 and divide by 5. Z equals 31 over 5 
equals C. And that's it. And by far, that's the hardest. Now, let's look and see, will 31 over 5 cause this to be 0? No. Cause this to be 0? No. Cause this to be 0? No. You can kind of tell just by looking at it. But we can, after factoring it, this is z minus 3 times z minus 6. The only two numbers that could cause that denominator to be 0 are 3. If z minus 3 is 0, then z equals 3. Or 6. If z minus 6 is 0, then z equals 6. Positive 3 or positive 6 are two numbers that would cause, are the only two numbers that would cause that denominator to equal zero. Z equals three is the only number that would cause Z minus three to equal zero because you'd have three minus three. That's obviously zero. And um, six, well, well, let's do this. Four Z minus 24 equals zero. Whoops, stop that equals zero. So 4z equals 24, which means z equals six. Z equals six. If z had equaled six, this denominator would be zero. But as long as for this whole problem, z does not equal three and z does not equal six, we are home free.